In Final Fantasy XIV, you can summon your very own chocobo companion to fight besides you in the overworld. Having one of these around is a huge quality of life improvement, as they can help keep you alive with heals, deal damage, and they even come with additional inventory space too. To start things off, you'll first need to be level 20, and complete the main story quest up to when you can join a grand company. Once able, do some research into what makes each grand company different, and join one you like. After that, you will need to do the quest My Little Chocobo from your respective grand company's commander. During this quest, you will be asked to buy chocobo insurance for 200 company seals. You may already have enough by then to just buy it outright, but if not, the easiest way to get seals is by doing fates or hunting logs in the open world. Once that's all complete though, you'll get your very own chocobo mount. For the next step, you'll need to be level 30, then pick up the quest My Feisty Little Chocobo from Dusset in Camp Tranquil in South Shroud. This will send you to the NPC Luclo at Bent Branch Meadows in Central Shroud, who will teach you the basics of using a chocobo companion. During which, he'll ask you to pick some Gizzle Greens nearby as these are what you'll be using to summon your companion going forwards. You can also buy these from various vendors. On screen are just a few of the common ones. After that, he'll go over some more basics on how to fight with your companion, and then have you take out a few Broodsies up on a hill nearby with your new partner. Once you report back to Luclo, the quest will be complete and companions will now be unlocked. He'll then have another quest available called Bird in Hand, which will teach you about chocobo raising and training. Completing this will increase the maximum rank your companion can attain from 10 to now 20, and allows for additional customization as well. So, now that you have companions unlocked, you also have access to an additional 70 slot inventory in the form of a companion saddlebag. This can be opened right from the character menu or bound to a keybind, and does not require a companion to be present to move items in and out of it. However, this cannot be accessed in duties. It is worth noting that the paid Final Fantasy XIV companion app doubles the saddlebag storage, as well as giving a few other perks too. I've personally never used it though, so I really don't know much about it outside of what's written online. But if you really need that extra inventory space, then it might be worth looking into. Anyways, in the character menu right below the saddlebag, you'll now also have access to the companion menu, which you can also set to a specific keybind too if you want. At the top of every tab in this menu, you'll see your chocobo's rank, experience, and time left on the summit. And speaking of summon duration, you can use Geishel or Gizzle Greens after it's summoned to increase its time on the field to up to an hour. The first tab, Actions, gives you all the controls you'll need for your companion, and these can be moved to a hotbar too. Some of these actions though, such as Summon and Withdraw, are kinda redundant, as you can withdraw it through the drop-down menu when right-clicking on your chocobo, or through its targeted health bar. Free Stance lets the companion do whatever it thinks is best for the situation. Defender focuses on aggro and CC. Healer Stance focuses on only healing and does not attack. And Attacker Stance focuses on damage. All these stances correspond to skill trees in the skills tab, which you can spec into as your chocobo ranks up, and we'll be getting more into ranking up in just a minute. Now, your chocobo can only use the active skills from each tree or stance when in that stance. But these stances can be changed at your whim by selecting them from the companion menu or a hotbar, if you put them on one. The passives for each do carry over though, and in case you were wondering, you will be able to unlock every skill once the chocobo reaches rank 20. But until then, if you end up not liking your current build, you can reset these skills whenever you want by feeding a regan pepper to your chocobo. Generally speaking, you'd usually want to max healing, attack, and then defense and in that order, while taking some of the passives in each tree as you see fit. However, if you're a healer, you may want to max attack and or defense first. I personally get a lot more use out of healing stance than anything else, no matter what job I'm using. So when jumping into fights, I usually start with healer stance, then swap it to free or attack stance depending on how things go. The third tab has to do with color and barding. Color will go over more when we get into stables, but barding is a cosmetic armor for your chocobo. It gives no stats, but changes its looks. There's lots of different types, and they're all unlocked in many different ways. So I'm just going to leave a link or two in the description to helpful pages like the one you're seeing right now, as well as other companion related info. Moving on to ranking up, the first and main method is by killing enemies in the overworld that are close to your level while your companion is summoned. Fates often spawn lots of enemies, so while your chocobo will not gain the completion bonus for fates, they are still great for ranking up. And even though you can sink down to lower level fates, i found that doing the highest level fate will yield the most XP to your companion per kill. But just keep in mind, a lower level fate might be better overall XP if it spawns tons of mobs to kill, so just use your best judgement. We then have a few weekly challenge logs that give companion XP too. 
These require you to dispatch 20 and then 100 enemies close to your level. You'll likely complete this very fast if you're actively fighting with your chocobo, but I figured I'd mention it anyways. Starting at rank 10, whenever your companion reaches its current rank cap through combat, it cannot gain experience towards its next rank unless it's given a Thavnerian Onion. You can get these onions from the market, but they are a little bit pricey. Alternatively, you can get a few of these from the quests landing a stable job and a hunter's true nature, though they both have some prerequisites. I'll be sure to put some links in the description that go over these quests too. Lastly, you can farm these, but to be honest, the whole farming process really confuses me, so I just buy the damn things. To feed the onion, just walk outside town, summon your companion, then use the onion right from your inventory. To clarify, your companion must first level up through combat to its current rank cap, then eat the onion when their XP bar is empty. This then unlocks the rank cap by 1, allowing you to continue leveling it up for another rank. The last way companions can get XP is by trading them at a stable. However, you do not need a stable to max out your chocobo whatsoever. They merely make things more convenient and offer a few other perks too. Starting off, to get access to a stable, you will either need to purchase an apartment, join an FC with a plot of land that has a stable, or get your own plot of land and purchase a stable for 125,000 gil at any of the housing merchants in the housing districts. Opening the stable options, up top you'll first see how many chocobos are stabled and how clean the stable is. Below, the first options we're given are to tend to someone else's chocobo, stable or tend to your own chocobo, or clean the stable. Keeping the stable clean rewards more XP for those training, so be sure to keep it clean if not for yourself for the others using it too. You will however need a magic kit stable broom every time you clean. Moving up, when stabling your chocobo, you will not be able to summon it to fight with you until you fetch it again. And when interacting with the stable again, you will see the option Tend to my chocobo where stable my chocobo previously was, if it's stabled. Selecting this will then give you a few more options. Starting at the bottom again and working our way up, Fetch will again remove your chocobo from the stable and you will now be able to use it in combat. Next, Change Name lets you do just that. Above that is the Feeding option, and this is now mostly used to change your chocobo's color. So, to put it simply, when feeding its specific snacks within a 6 hour window, its color will change according to the RGB values of the snacks. Luckily for us, there's a few websites out there that can help with this. Just pick a color you want, and they will give you a list of feeding instructions of what to feed and in the order too. I should warn you though that it sometimes doesn't always come out the way you want it. So if it comes out wrong, just try again or try for a slightly different color. The last and or technically first option back in this list is training which we alluded to earlier. This can only be done once an hour, and when first selecting this, you'll get a prompt asking you to produce one of the following foods listed on screen as a reward to present to your chocobo when the training completes. Now, they all give the same XP towards your next rank. However, when feeding certain foods to your chocobo in the wild, as in when you summon it in the overworld, they'll gain temporary buffs. And if you use the same food as a training reward 10 times in a row, that food will become its favorite, doubling its effect whenever you feed it that outside. The nice part about training is that even though it can only be done once an hour, you can retrieve your chocobo as soon as the little cutscene ends. Backing out to the first menu, tending to a specific chocobo allows you to train someone else's chocobo in the same manner you train your own. So with this, you can technically have your companion trained twice an hour. Besides that, there's nothing special about it. I just wanted to explain how training worked before getting to this feature was all. Wrapping things up, there are a few more things worth mentioning. First off, you cannot access your saddlebags during duties. I know I mentioned this at the beginning, but it really bears repeating. Secondly, you cannot use companions in zones like Eureka, Baja, or Zadnor, or anything like that. And lastly, your chocobo will stand in every AoE possible, so you might have to do some minor adjusting when out in the wilds to get them to not get clipped all the time. There's definitely more little tidbits like that that I probably forgot about, but I think I covered just about everything you need to know to get started with your own companion. I honestly can't stress enough just how much better of a time you'll have in the open world once getting one of these things. So go get your chocobos, and if you already have one, please feel free to mention anything I missed. Thanks for sticking till the end, and take care.